Welcome to your ninth Java tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about loops. So to quickly give you an idea what loops are, in real life we really hate doing the same task over and over again. It's something that is more like punishment for us unless it's video games. But the computer will have no problem doing that if you tell it to and you accomplish that through loops. So a loop is a statement or block of code that is repeated in a program over and over. You can specify a fixed number of times you want to do that or you can run it indefinitely. So when you create a loop statement it will cause your program to keep returning to the same place over and over again. So that's really a good way to think of loops. In Java there are three types of loop statements that you can create. There is the for loop, the do loop, and the while loop. We are going to be dealing today with the for loop. And it just so happens that the for loop is the most complicated of the three loops. So if you get the for loop down, the do and the while loop will be a little bit easier. So to kick off the for loop, we type in the keyword for. You can see it turns to blue because it's recognized by Java. And then we're going to type in an open parenthesis. There are three parts to a for loop that you need to be concerned with. There is the initialization section, the conditional section, and the change section. And we will go over all three of those parts. So in the first statement, we want to initialize a variable. And this essentially is the starting point. This is where we're actually declaring the starting point. So let's call this, uh, let's give this an int we'll say start and we'll say this is equal to 5. We'll start it at 5. And then you're going to go ahead and hit a uh, semicolon and we move to the second section which is the conditional section. And the conditional section essentially tells us when to end this for loop. So again in this first section we're telling it to start at 5 well, we need to have a main method here, which we, we can just copy and paste this from another program. This is just the standard main method. And let's get a closing squiggly bracket. Okay, so let's move on to the second parameter now, or the second section within this for statement that we've defined. And in this second section, we are going to tell the for loop how far it should go. So we'll use the variable again. We'll use the less than and equal sign and we'll say to 50. So what we're saying here is this should run until it's less than or equal to 50. And basically it'll go to 50. So we're going to start at 5 and end at 50. The third section is called the change section. And this is where we're specifying what to do each time this loop runs one time. And what we're going to say is increment this by one every time this loop runs. So we'll use the plus plus to accomplish that. And before we run this, let's actually, this is going to produce too much output. So let's, let's change the first uh, section to a zero and the middle section let's switch that to a 10 and then we're going to do a system out dot print and let's just print out the variable and now we will run this and we should get and you'll see here it printed out all the numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 it stopped at 10 because we said no greater than 10 so or less than or equal to 10 so we said stop there do not go to 11 and it did and so that's how that works now you could also increment this by 2 if you wanted to plus or equals to 2 and if we run this again you'll see we get a little bit so you can see down here it incremented it by 2 each time so instead of so we did 0 2 4 6 8 10 so in this third section you specify how much to increment by each time the loop runs through and matches this second condition. And if it matches it and continues, you say increment it by two. That's why it was zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. And that is it for the for loop. I will see you in the next tutorial.